What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm so glad that you're here. It is it is New Year's Day. It is. It's January 1st, and with me today is my friend Jordan. Hello, Hello, Jordan. I'm Jordan. Excellent whoop. Jordan's yeah. an elite whooper. That was here on a, staff. a New Year's Day whoop. <laughs> Jordan is the uh, worship pastor at our Williston campus and also at our uh, uh, at the New Hope here campus and in Tioga. I love Tioga. You and Michael kind of we love worship Tioga. all over the place. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, Not all over the place. I've never led worship in Ohio. Mm, you should. Not yet. That'd be great. Not yet. Michael's on producer cam. Hi, Michael. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Happy we, New Year. We now have a new goal. That's our goal for this year. What? Russ's church is, is in Ohio. Yeah, so we just need to get you to Ohio. I was actually, Russ hey, is watching. We, Shout out to Russ. He he streams our songs That's for true. worship. You actually have led worship in Ohio. <laughs> I, picked the wrong, I picked the wrong state. <laughs> I could have picked any other state. Uh, it's, uh, it's New Year's Day, so prepare yourself for about nine more minutes of this before the service gets started. If you're uh, newer to New Hope or checking us out online for the first time, this is, we call this the lobby. It's just kind of our hangout time before the service gets started. And today you're hanging out with us. Yes. And it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, luckily they're that, probably yeah. like pretty asleep after New Year's Eve, right. you know? I, okay. You're a little older than me. Late 30s, we'll go with. That's a nice way and, to say it. And you're <laughs> late 20s? Yes. Okay. And I'm mid 30s. <clears throat> Do you guys still stay up till midnight intentionally? Is that like still a part of your? Yeah, see, that's what I'm. La- no. Last year was the first year I just didn't even stay up till midnight. I just didn't care. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the day. I used to. What about like December 31st? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that day. Yeah, that's the one. I thought you just meant like on a daily basis. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood the question. <laughs> On New Year's, I should have clarified. On yeah. New Year's Eve, yeah, then you, you like you like midnight. you know pull the string, you know, popper, you know, oh. having a good time. Do you actually do one of those? <laughs> like, I think just last in your year, basement by I yourself. Think, <laughs> I think Megan bought like a four pack, and we that's <laughs> fantastic. No, not last year, two years ago. But you, this, that's still a part of what you'll do on New Year's Eve. You stay up intentionally. Until... I think it like it's it depends on if like someone has planned something. You know, oh, I'll, sure. I'll just kind of like be That's hanging true. out yeah. until midnight. Yeah. But then, like, if someone plans something, then it's like, okay, I'll go have fun, I guess. Yeah. I think I'm such a nice guy. Yeah, Kid, yeah you are. <laughs> kids are kind of the the. Yeah. Game they get really excited it. about Cause, it. Because well, once you're home with your kids, <clears throat> it's kind of like yeah, you put them to bed. And yeah. You're like I could also go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna say I think like. And when you're younger, like mm-hmm. staying up to midnight is like pretty fun because you don't have to do it often. Oh yeah. Oh, but yeah. when you're older, if you're staying up till midnight, like you probably forgot to do something earlier at work. <laughs> That's a good point. And That's now, true. You're, now you're doing that thing <laughs> until midnight. Yeah. And it's like sad. Let us know in the chat if you stayed up until midnight last night. Slight spoiler alert. We're filming this before New Year's Eve, so mm-hmm. quite a ways we, before. we don't we don't know if any of us recorded it Ooh. or recorded it. Stayed up and died. Yeah. We did record Very, it. We definitely right. record. Wait, hold on. Are we recording, producer? We're recording. Okay, on this end. <laughs> good. Yeah. We definitely recorded I, it. If any of us stayed up until midnight, I'm gonna guess that I probably didn't. I don't think honest. I will yeah. because it's a Sunday. I, you know. I'm oh, sure. Uh, That's pretty. Early. I, uh, I be I'll be on a cruise. I'm right. kind of excited about that. So I don't know what's going to be happening. We might stay up because it's we're just not you in our normal setting. Floating in the ocean. It's I kind might, of the same situation. Like, like me like myself or on a, the boat floating? I, on a I, door. <laughs> on a, oh. There's enough oh, room for boy. Yeah. yeah, there's enough room for more than one person on the door, Michael. Please remember that. Okay. But no, Michael, you have like the same situation. I bet they're going to have like some party oh, or something. Absolutely. And you're going to be there's like, we got to stay up to yeah. eat hors d'oeuvres. Are you yeah. kids on this cruise as well? No. Oh, yeah, you'll be up at midnight. Yeah, you'll probably be up, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope uh, whatever you did for New Year's Eve, you had fun. Uh, I think we talked about it last year, but my favorite New Year's ever was Joanne and I. It was We were had been married a few years. We went over to our friends, Pete and Audrey's house, who have like 175 children, but they were just locked in their bedroom, so that was fine. <clears throat> and we watched The Melon Drop on Channel 45 <clears throat> local television, the weirdest Melon the drop? weirdest local TV production of all time, intentionally bad in the funniest way ever. Oh, man. One of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. Bring, hashtag bring back the melon drop. Go ahead and drop that in there if you're from the Twin Cities. <laughs> um, so that I, you know, we would do fun things like that on New Year's Eve. But at this point, yeah, I'm more of a let's just go to bed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's go to bed. You don't. You didn't watch the New York one because that's like a no. little earlier, right? Joanna always does. Joanna watches it. I think last year we let Leighton stay up to watch like the first one that happened. I assume yeah. the New York one, or maybe we would just let him watch like the Australia one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think it's usually Australia gets like the first one, so yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. great. 
I hope that you joined us on Christmas Day for the New Hope Christmas special. If you didn't, <clears throat> don't don't do it now because hopefully you're with us live. <laughs> yeah. So like. We'll do this service and then go to our YouTube channel, new, uh, youtube.com slash New Hope Here, because the the New Hope, the first annual, as Hattie has named it, <laughs> even though we may never do it again, <laughs> the first annual New Hope Christmas special was pretty fantastic. Yeah. And I hope that you stuck around to the very end of it because the three of us, along with our friends Olivia and Hattie, uh, partook in a very, very special Christmas tradition, singing well, a Christmas carol yeah. together. Singing is a for, strong word. For all of you. Yeah, it was for you. We did it for you. Um, and you may have watched it and said, I did not want this. <laughs> Why did you do this for me? There's no um, way. There's no way anyone did not want that. How much time do we have before the service? Uh, we have about four minutes. Okay. I, I think um, we sang Good King Wenceslas. Well, I know uh, we did. Uh, an un- well, I'm just, for the people that missed. For the people that missed. You may have forgotten as well, Jordan. I just wasn't sure. It, oh, you may have blocked it out. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a void there in my yeah. brain for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, and while we were preparing for this, Jordan and I started breaking down the lyrics of Good King Wenceslas, which I don't think anybody has done since like the year 1814. Since it's written. Yeah, uh, we, we haven't looked up what the song is like actually about no. at any point. <clears throat> but we have the lyrics here with us because Michael, Hattie, and Olivia really enjoyed our breakdown. And I enjoyed it as well because it's a much better song than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So would you you go ahead and get us started, yeah. Jordan? Yeah, um, the first word is Hattie. Oh, just kidding. That's just her name. She's, she's, she's singing. She's singing this yeah. part. Imagine Hattie singing this yeah. part. Good King Wenceslas looked mm, out nailed it. on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon mm. that night, though the frost was cruel. When a more poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. So first verse, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, rich guy. Looking out, people are eating. I don't know what the Feast of Stephen is. Like yeah, I that said. was, we I think that's the, the one thing we're not sure we, is, we didn't who's look Stephen? It up. Uh, and a uh, poor guy was there picking up firewood to burn. So we'll go to the second verse here. Yep. Uh, Hither page, and stand by me, if you knoweth telling. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? So this is the, this is the king now mm-hmm. talking to his squire. The good king. Yep, the good king. That's a good yeah. point. It's a good point. He is a very good king. Uh, and so then the squire responds, the page, Sire, he lives a good league hence underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence by St. Agnes Fountain. Now, here's where we initially got confused because mm-hmm. mountain property, very expensive. Oh, yeah. So he's Near a, a fountain, too. And, yeah, so he has a fountain and Waterfront, mountain property. technically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not certain this song isn't about him just pulling a con on the king. It like, at be. this point, that's where I'm at. So please continue with the next verse. Yeah. Uh, and so this will be the king again talking. Yes. Bring me food and bring me wine. Bring me pine logs hither. You and I will see him dine when we bear them thither. Page and monarch forth they went, forth they went together through the rude wind's wild lament and the bitter weather. So this is where we get to the point where my question becomes, why did he... So the poor man lives under the mountain mm-hmm. right next to the forest. Fence. But the forest fence. Yeah. But he wandered so far to where this king could see him gathering firewood, Mm -hmm. which, uh, according to that verse that we just read, is extremely far away. But he lived by the forest. Why didn't he just get firewood from the forest? Right Again, this brings me back to... No, why? Is that fence. (laughs) There was a really high fence. It's in the way. He couldn't get to the forest because of the fence. Because of the fence. He had to walk around, you know? Yeah. So that's... I still think that lends to my he's pulling a con on the king... (laughs) You know, like, oh, I'm really poor. Come bring me some stuff, even though there's firewood right by where I live. It could be. But it could be the fence. It could be the fence. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the page wait, wait, now. We've got a minute left. Okay. okay. This is the page now. Sire, the night is darker now, and the wind blows stronger. Fails my heart, I know not how. I cannot go longer. So the page is, page is done. He's had enough. He's, he's struggling. Gonna, he's going to fall in the snow and freeze to death. He sees right through the, the guy's face. Yeah, he's, yeah <laughs> he sees through the con. <laughs> Uh, but again, the good king, mark my footsteps, my good page, tread thou in them boldly. You shall find the winter's rage, freeze thy blood less coldly. Yeah, this so, is this mm. is when I started to get emotional because I was like, oh, the good king. This is actually when, really we, a good when king, we did yeah. start realizing, like, oh, this is actually this is a, a really great nice song. song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan? Yeah, and then it, and it says, in his master steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted, heat was in the very sod, which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian men be sure, wealth or rank possessing, you who now will bless the poor, bless the poor, 
shall yourselves find blessing. Yeah, I truly did not know that the song was like genuinely about helping poor people. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> until oh, or until like, or we sang king. it so ridiculously. Yeah. Or the good king showing them how to like yeah. lead in like that spirit an, of humility. Yeah, like setting an example. Yeah. yeah. That was amazing. Like, Very good song. Went from being a song that I don't think about other than the ridiculous <laughs> version that we sang, which yeah. is the Reliant K version, to being like, this is like one of the best Christmas songs. I think exists. it's like when you hear the word thither, like you can't help but laugh. Right, yeah. <laughs> And we, we use the bring me food and bring me wine line, but I believe the original lyrics are bring me flesh and bring me wine, I think we read. Yeah. Which oh. just sounds weird. Like so communion, just, maybe? I, maybe communion. Or maybe just though. like meat. Could be, just, yeah. 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 Bring me some meat yeah, from the knows? deer that you hunted. I don't know. Sure. But either way. <laughs> go either way. Good King Lex's List, list. Great song. If you missed our Christmas special, please make sure that, that you check that out. There was other stuff as well. That was just the very end of it that we were talking about today. But... Uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. We're glad that you're here. It's the last week of our Messiah uh, series that mm -hmm. we have, so Pastor Mike's going to have a really great message for us today. Um, we're so glad that you're here. Jordan, thank you for joining me. A pleasure Michael, as always. thank you for being here. We hope you're you welcome. had a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and we will see you in just a minute. Well, hey, church, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We're so glad that you're with us today. What's the New Year song? Is it Old Lang Syne? Happy New Year, too. No, that's the birthday song. <laughs> I liked it, though. That was really good. <laughs> Isn't that song? Yes, yeah, Old Lang Syne. Old Lang Syne. What, what's the name of it, Michael? Old Lang Syne. <laughs> we would love to sing Old Lang Syne to you right now. Um, but I did my only singing in our Christmas special, so I hope that you checked out our Christmas special. We hope you had such a great Christmas. Yes, we do. We hope you had a great New Year. I don't really understand New Year's. But a lot of people really like it. It gives us a reason to celebrate, so, yeah. so why not? So let's celebrate. It's been so long since we had a holiday to celebrate. <laughs> right. So we're glad. We're so glad that you decided to join us on New Year's Day. Uh, and we have a great service yes. today. Uh, we're continuing. It's our third and yeah, last. That's the last one. Sermon Are you doing in okay? uh, Messiah. I am. Okay. It's the new year. New year, new year, new me. <laughs> You're not as sad anymore Correct, during, yeah. the end of, during the end of the series. Okay, good. Messiah has been such a cool series. We know that you really liked it. We took a, a short break last week for, for our Christmas special, yeah. but uh, we're back at it this week. Pastor yeah. Mike's got a great message. We've got some great worship music. We yep. We're, we're kind of done with the Christmas music now, yeah. but you can find it on our YouTube channel, so you can always find more of it there. Yeah. But great worship, great message from Pastor Mike. We're so glad that you're here, New Hope family, and let's worship together. the room. 
Hey, church family, thank you again for joining us this week. I, I hope that you had a great Christmas. I hope that uh, you're awake this morning. That's I don't know, good. Are you, a, are you a up late person on New Year's Eve? Um, you weren't with us on the lobby, so we didn't hear. No, you didn't. Well, it's my birthday on New Year's right. Eve. You got, I was like waiting in the background. Sorry, like, let, me I... re let me restart. <laughs> yeah, okay. Happy birthday, Hattie. Thank you. Did... 
<laughs> I was like in the back, like, will they talk about my birthday? Mm. And no. That's our bad. And you guys yeah, didn't. Well, that's a swing I'm not quite on the party. Olivia's level, but. Right. We have to talk about Olivia's birthday or we get in a lot of trouble yeah. in the office. Well, have everybody in the chat right now, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to Hattie. That's not quite what I was looking for. No. Thank you. I would like to say that as much as, as fun as the Christmas music was, I was, I loved that we were back to kind of more normal worship Me songs. Too. But Me too. if you are still in Christmas music mode, you go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash new hope here. All our Christmas music from December, from Christmas Eve, it's all on a spe specific playlist, Christmas music playlist. So you can go binge it as much as you so want. So if they're to. like Pastor Mike, you yes. love Christmas music all year long. You'll probably find Pastor YouTube. Mike listening to that playlist <laughs> just at all times. Yeah. But <clears throat> Pastor Mike, speaking of Pastor Mike. Whoa, good transition. Thank you. Yep. We, uh, he has a great message for us today as he closes out this Messiah series. But before we get to that, we just want to touch on a few things. The first thing is our Connect card. Yep. And we would love to have you fill that out. Um, we would love if, if you filled that out every single week. Let us know if you have any prayer requests, any praises. Uh, we as a staff and our prayer team, we just mm -hmm. love to know how we could be praying for and yeah. with you. There's also spots on there if you're looking for more information about the church, ways to get connected, anything like that. So definitely go and fill out that Connect card. Yes, us. and if you're joining us, joining with us for the first time, or maybe you've been around for a little bit, and you have kids that are watching with you, uh, fun fact, we have a special, I love special, fun facts. whoa, <laughs> special message. I can never say those words just for your one. kiddos. So as Pastor Mike uh, starts his message in just a moment, grab another device for your kiddos. Mm -hmm. uh, click the link that's in the chat right now. And Pastor Anna and Pastor Andrea have a really fun just time of worship and learning for your kids. So be sure to check that out if you have kiddos joining with you, preschool and elementary is what it's for. It this time. Yes, <clears> but I didn't say special ages. message, right? So it was like I got We're half. gonna count it. We're thank gonna count you. it because it's your birthday. Oh, thank it's your you. Birthday. See, I've mentioned it again. It was yesterday. <clears throat> We're just roll with okay, it. Just okay. roll with it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I wanna take a moment as well just to thank those of you that have been faithfully giving, especially throughout the end of the year, those of you that gave to our Christmas Eve mm -hmm. offering. We're so thankful for that we gave the entire thing away um, and so we just want to thank those of you for your faithful giving it's the only way we can do our ministry here at new hope um, mm -hmm. is through your giving and i want to encourage those of you who who haven't been giving uh, if, if you feel that god is calling you to do so which we believe that he calls all of us to do so as his followers mm -hmm. go to new hope uh, newhopehere.com slash give there you got it <laughs> yep. or you can see on the screen there's a text to give number as well that has changed so make sure that you see the new text to give number mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can go ahead and, and give that way it's the new year so maybe uh, maybe we start some new uh, spiritual disciplines yeah. at the start of the year yes and maybe one of those for you is prayer mm -hmm. uh, and we would love to come alongside of you in prayer so whatever you've got going on today or in the week leading up to today we just want to be able to pray with yeah, you as part of our church family so if you click that button in the chat right now uh, we have people who are ready to pray with you. So all you have to do is type your prayer request and one of our hosts would love to pray with you. Also, if you're joining with us later, you can put that on your Connect card, kind of yes. like you mentioned a second ago, yep. uh, just because we so believe in the power of prayer. And that's one thing as your church family, we want to support you. in. so uh, yep. again, click that in the chat and we'll be right there with you to pray with you. But church, wherever you're joining with us today, we want to pray with you right now as well. God, uh, we just thank you for uh, the opportunity of, of new beginnings and new years and um, just kind of that feeling of we can start afresh. And Lord, we know that we can always uh, start new with you. And so this year, God, we pray that uh, individually and as a church, that we would just be people who are devoted to, to following you, to seeking you, uh, to be in relationship with you, God. And so uh, as our new year kicks out, God, we just pray that we would draw close to you and we hold on to that promise that when we do that, God, that you draw close to us as well. And maybe even today we would feel that for the first time, Father. And so we just pray for people who are joining with us, wherever they're joining, whenever they're joining, God, that they would just feel that sense of you have drawn close to them today, mm -hmm. Lord. And uh, we know that nothing stands in the way of you being close to us uh, because of what you did uh, through your son, Jesus. And so we just thank you for that promise today. We hold on to that promise today, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Happy New Year, New Hope. Christmas is over. I googled it. It says only 258 shopping days until Christmas next year. Some of you are pulling out right now. Is he right? I don't know. That's what Google said. 
Here's what we've been talking about this Christmas season. We've been talking about what it means for Jesus to be called the Messiah. And we've asked why that matters. Next week, we're going to get back to the greatest story ever told. In the first few weeks of the new year, we're calling them 23 and Me. I know, not real original. But we're going to look at some of the Old Testament kings who live some pretty wild and crazy lives. And we're going to find out why their stories matter to us. But for today, the very first day of 2023, which is hard to believe, hard for me to wrap my mind around, I want to invite you to grab your Bible and turn to near the end of your Bible. It's the book of Hebrews, almost to the book of Revelation. If you hit Revelation, go back left. Um, it's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Now, I want to give us, as you're finding that, a quick history lesson. The beginning of the year is one of those times that I think God loves. In fact, I think he, I believe he kind of programmed seasons and holidays. In fact, we learned from the Old Testament, holidays were originally his idea, kind of crossroad moments of life. I think he designed those into life for a reason, to give us moments of reflection and commitment and growth and transforming decisions. God designed us to grow. Even before sin messed everything up, God designed us to grow. And that's part of what the book of Hebrews is all about. If you have time this week, and I hope you do, take some time to read the, like the first nine chapters of Hebrews. And I want to encourage you to do that. The writer takes us through who Jesus is, why knowing Jesus matters, what Jesus really does, his birth, his life, his resurrection. Just incredible teaching to help you lay a solid foundation for your faith. And then after these nine chapters, he kind of turns a corner. And in chapter 10, he gives us a challenge. And he gives the challenge to those who have chosen to have a relationship with Jesus, who have chosen to be a follower of Jesus. So here's what I want to do. I want to read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And I want to read the first little part, and then we're going to stop and we'll get to the others. Here's how he starts. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, so he's referring to stuff he's taught already, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, again, referring to stuff he's taught in the previous nine chapters, and since we have a great priest over the house of God. So let's just stop there. How does this start? It starts with the word therefore. Therefore, brothers. And that phrase means, therefore, ones who have made a decision to have Jesus be the leader of your life and the forgiver of your sins. And the implication of what he says next in these little phrases, he says, you are forgiven if you've made that decision and you're completely cleansed from sin. That's how he starts. He says, and now you can choose to begin to live differently. You can change. You can experience contentment and joy and hope and real relationships and a love that you aren't able to experience with any kind of lasting sense without Jesus. So the implications of what he's saying is you can now be, you are a different person. And then what he does in the verses that follow is he gives us four choices, four choices kind of resolutions that if you're a follower of Jesus, you make, they're going to make an exponential difference in your life. And I think it's a very appropriate thing for us to talk about on New Year's Day, because this is the time when we tend to think about, just like God created holidays and high days, these moments for us to think about the future, reflect on the past, and, and God, what do you want to change in us? So this is a great moment for us to learn from God. Here are four commitments we can make that will change our lives in incredible ways in 2023. So here's the first one. He says in verse 22, he says, Let us draw near. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. In other words, the stuff we've learned, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, we've asked Jesus to forgive us of our sin, and having our bodies washed with pure water. We've gone public with the act of baptism. And he says, draw near to God. Have you ever asked, how do you draw near to God? Well, how do you draw near a person? You spend time with them. You talk to them. You get to know him. So what's the best way to, not, to draw near to God? You get to know him. And what's the best way to get to know God? You spend time with what he's said to us. 
You spend time with his word. And so he gives us the first choice. He says, make it normal to spend time with me. And so here's our first revel our resolution. We're going to resolve this year. Here's what we're going to do this year. We're going to resolve to draw near to God. And here, how are we going to draw near to him? We're to spend time reading the Bible every day. You say, well, what if I miss a day? Don't beat yourself up. Just pick it up the next day. I mean, this isn't a measure of spirituality. This is, the this is the decision to grow. And if you don't know where to start, here's what we're going to do. In, in the chat right now, and I hope you're in the chat, in the chat right now, we're going to put a link to a Bible reading plan using the Bible app on your phone or device or whatever so that you can get it or, and, or our website so that you can get a Bible reading plan that will take you through the Bible in a year. But we're going to resolve to do this together. So the first resolution is draw near to God. We're going to spend time reading the Bible every day. Let's go to the second resolution. The second resolution the Bible challenges us to, us to make is in verse 23. He says, let us hold on to hope. Notice what it says. He says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. You know, we talk about New Year's resolutions and what, what do most of us do with New Year's resolutions? We start and then a few days in, it's like, well, maybe not today. So what do we do? We swerve a little bit. And then a few days later, we swerve a little bit. And then like three weeks gone by and we didn't do that. And it was like, oh, we need to get back to the gym. We need to get back to our eating plan, whatever it is. And pretty soon March comes and we're completely off. He says, hold unswervingly to hope. We've been talking about hope in this Messiah series. And the writer is assuming that we know who the Messiah is and that we need to hold on to that. So how do we hold unswervingly on to hope? The real key is to remind ourselves of who we're hoping in. We talked a couple of weeks ago in our Messiah series about having hope in the only one who is worthy of our hope. The only one that will give us a strong enough hope that it will last and in the church, sometimes we have kind of reminder moments. We call them litanies. It's a great church word. But a litany is basically a repeated phrase. Like a worship leader will say a phrase and then we'll all repeat back a phrase. And it's, they're phrases that are true. And why do we do that? Is it just because that's what we're supposed to do? No, it's, they're designed to remind us of stuff that matters. One of the things we, phrases, the litanies we use around New Hope is the worship leader will say, God is good. And then the rest of us will say all the time. Those are important things for us to be reminded of. Then the worship leader will say all the time. And then the rest of us will say, God is good. And it, it's not just a fun, feel good moment. It's reminders to help us hold on to hope. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you kind of some litanies. Maybe write these down. I'm going to give you a phrase and then after it, just put in all the time. Because these are things we know to be true about God. So the one I just gave you, God is good all the time. Write that down. How about this one? God's word is true all the time. This one, the Bible speaks to my life all the time. Knowing Jesus personally is the only way to God all the time. When I ask him to forgive me, he forgives me all the time time. Maybe you want to write those down and just put those on a bathroom mirror. Put those someplace to remind yourself. So here's what we're going to resolve this year. To hold unswervingly to hope, we're going to resolve to regularly remind yourself of who God is. That's how you hold on to hope. Third thing the writer says in verse 24, he says, let us spur one another. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. I don't know about you, but I do not like to be jabbed in the ribs. And I kind of wonder if that's how a horse feels like when, you know, when a person is riding them and they use as a spur. If it were me and I'm the horse, I'd be tempted to buck the person off. I'm not going faster. I'm getting you off. Stop jabbing me in the ribs. I hate being jabbed in the ribs. But the truth is, sometimes I need it. There's times when I'm in a meeting or I'm, or I'm in a conversation and someone says something and I want to respond and I probably shouldn't respond and Kylie next to me kind of jabs me in the ribs like, don't say it, don't do it, you know. Sometimes I need someone to jab me and point out that I'm being grumpy or I'm hungry and so I'm a little hangry or I'm focusing on the negative or I'm not being all that loving. 
And the truth is I need people. And so one of the commitments that is so helpful for you and for me to help us grow and to grow in a huge way is to make a commitment to stop being so crazily and quite bluntly, unbiblically independent. We need people. I need friends. I need a small group. I need to stay in conversations even when it's uncomfortable, maybe even especially when it's uncomfortable because that's when I grow the most. So here's the resolution. I need a small group. I need a small group. And I know you're joining us on New Hope here and you say, well, I don't have a small group, but the truth is you can begin a small group. I want you to stick around to the end and our host team is gonna talk about what we call gatherings. Gatherings, and gatherings matter. You can start a gathering right where you are because you need people. Final thing that the writer gives us in verse 25, he says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the, what's the key word? Habit of doing. You ever try to break a habit? Breaking a habit is one of the most difficult things in the world to do. And the writer here talks about a habit that's so easy for us to form and will mess up our life. It's that a habit of not making, hanging out with God's people a priority. And it's easy to make that a habit, right? So here's our resolution. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to resolve to be in church. And I put in there every week. And some of you are saying, I can't be there every week. So it's going to be like our resolution to reading our Bible every day. Some weeks you're going to miss. Miss a day, but don't miss two days. Miss a week, but don't miss two weeks. And why is this important? Why is this such a big deal? Well, for starters, it's a big deal because God says it's a big deal. If God says it, there's a reason for it, and it's for your good. It isn't a metric of spirituality. It's a process to, it's a part of how he helps you grow. Scripture is clear that something happens when we gather together that happens no other way. So one of the phrases we use these days is new normal, right? So what's your new normal going to be in 2023? The Bible gives us four normals, four daily decisions, four weekly decisions that are going to direct our lives and direct our growth. Draw near to God, to God, spend time reading the Bible daily, hold on to hope, remind yourself often of who God is, spur one another on, I need a small group, and don't give up meeting. Be in church, be in church. New Hope, Let's make 2023 the best year yet. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you so much for those that are joining us on this New Year's Day. And I ask for your blessing on them. I ask that you would help all of us to have the courage, to have the the will to make a commitment to say, we want to grow this year like never before. And you promise that as we step into these places of growth, you're going to be the one to grow us as we've never grown before. So we ask you to help us. It's in your name we pray, amen. Well, hey again, church. We hope that you found today's message valuable and that it encourages you to take a next step. And part of Pastor Mike's message today, he talked about the importance for us Mm -hmm. to be in community. And so maybe for you, one of your next steps is to start a gathering or to be part of a gathering. And we encourage that every week because we know it's so important for us to be with other believers. Whether you're a brand new Christian or even following the Lord for the long time, we grow best when we're with other people. And so that's why we're always talking about gatherings. Um, And also it's a great opportunity to invite other people Mm -hmm. to join with you. So if you feel like as this new year is starting, maybe God's laying on your heart that you do need to be with people. We want to encourage you. There's a button in the chat right now. Click mm-hmm. that. Uh, there's a really simple form for you to fill out and, and our uh, David will just be in contact with you with more information about it. doesn't mean you're yeah. signing up to do a gathering forever or to that you're going to have 50 people over at your house every week because uh, that would be really <laughs> good could, gathering. You, you could. That would be awesome. Yeah. But maybe it's just uh, having a friend over for coffee yeah. or meeting up with somebody and watching the service together. So yeah. if that is you right now, we really encourage you to click that button in the chat. Yeah, and you know, Hattie, earlier in, early in the service, <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned it was your birthday yesterday. Yes. And you know what? It's my birthday tomorrow. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> I had to slip that in yeah. only because you mentioned yours. So, so should I sing you happy birthday and then you yeah. sing me happy birthday? You start with you singing me happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Uh, I guess I'm not going to do it, so <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> <Sure. though. laughs> but we do hope you wish Michael... <laughs> 
Happy birthday, and, and big shout. And Hattie, too. Thank you. Yes. We, we almost share a birthday, which is kind of kind fun. fun. I don't know. Yeah, but we are yeah. not the same age, right? <laughs> not, no. Oh, yeah. That's good, good for me. <laughs> Uh, one other thing we want to encourage as a new year is starting for you to check out the Grow podcast. Yeah. Uh, whether you're a podcast person or not, this one is so, so good because uh, Pastor Mike just goes uh, a little deeper with whatever he taught about that Sunday. Um, and it comes out Monday morning. So if yeah. you are into podcasts or again, if you're not, we really want to encourage you to check that mm -hmm. out. You can find it wherever podcasts are. It's called the Grow podcast. So check it out. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. And next week, we're back in the greatest story, t story ever told. It's our uh, 31 week long series. Uh, and then our sub series for this this uh, next week is called 23 and Me. Such a good uh, name. So it is. It's yeah, a great I'm name. So come back it. next week, find out what 23 and Me is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Mike already has a great message prepared. Uh, but until then, let's go and be the church.